If you have a permanent ham radio or GMRS antenna system at your home, you need to install a dedicated ground rod just for your antenna system, and you need to bond this to your home's ground system. Now, this is a lot easier than you might think. You can do it yourself, or you can get somebody to do it for you. Either way, I'm gonna show you how to install one just like this, coming up. So first of all, the ground rod is an eight foot ground rod that you can pick up from Home Depot. These are not very expensive. And there's a couple main ways that you can drive it into the ground. You can use a hammer, or as I would recommend, getting one of these demolition or hammer drill tools just from the Home Depot rental or other hardware store rental. They come with an attachment that is specifically made for driving ground rods. So this is a huge, huge, huge way to make this a lot easier and to save yourself a lot of time and effort. And again, if you're not really comfortable doing this, you can always get someone to install one of these ground rods for you. It's not a big deal. Now next, before you install the ground rod, you need to consider the location. You want it to be close to where you're gonna be entering the shack. I'm installing this for my shack at my home now, so my shack entrance is right here, so the ground rod's gonna be very close. You can install it pretty close to the side of your home. I'm just gonna be a couple feet away from the side of my home. Um, you also need to consider where your existing ground rod is because you're gonna to wanna to bond this ground rod to your home's existing ground so that you don't create an electrical potential difference between the different grounds. So you may wanna consider the location of that. And you also want as short of a connection as possible to the antennas. So think about where your antennas are gonna be because you're also gonna be running a ground line from your antennas to the ground rod. All those things considered, this is the location of mine. And, and one other main factor I wanna mention as well is you need to know where your utilities are so you can call your utility companies, they can come out and mark those for you and ensure that you're not in the way of any of those utilities. With all those things done and a location selected, you're ready to start driving that ground rod. I'm just gonna give it a quick push and get this started. And actually my ground is really soft here. So I've got a great start on this actually without the tool, which is kind of phenomenal. And that's where, that's where I get stuck. So I've got a great start on this. Now I'm gonna take my tool And this is only an 11 pound hammer drill, so. Now it's really up to you how much or little of the ground rod you want to leave exposed. I'm gonna leave a couple inches here just to make it really easy for my connections and so that it's very easy to spot. It's not in the way of anything that I'm doing here. But the next steps now that I've got that driven are I'm gonna be able to run my antenna ground from here. I'm gonna be able to use lightning arresters and I need to bond this to my home's existing ground as well. But that's all there is to it. It's a lot simpler than at first I thought. And huge recommendation is to get one of these as well as that ground rod attachment. It just makes this so, so, so much easier. As you could see, I ran into some tougher ground or some rock as I was, uh, as I was placing this ground rod. So this really sped up the process and saved me a lot of headaches. So that's how you drive a ground rod. And for those of you who know more about this, let me know, what would you change? What would you recommend on driving your ground rod as well? 73. We've helped over 60,000 students get their US FCC amateur radio license, and we can help you too, no matter your age or educational background. Go to www.hamradioprep.com and try a free lesson today.